Hey there, Covenant family. Great to be with you yet again. You know, I grew up in this church. I can remember Charlie Tipton playing on the piano up here just as fluidly as, oh, it was fabulous. It was a great memory. I can remember him playing a song. I believe the title is called Trust and Obey. And, and one of the lines in this this song says, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That is a novel idea, isn't it? Trust and obey. Sarcasm added, that's mine. I want to tell you a story to help illustrate the importance of trusting and obeying. It's a Bible story. It's about a pro prophecy student. Um, his name is Elisha, and his teacher happens to be Elijah, the great prophet uh, from the Old Testament. It's found in 2 Kings 2. Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal, on their way to Bethel. Well, when they get to Bethel, Elijah says to Elisha, you stay here, I'm going to go on. You stay here. And um, Elisha says, no, I am not leaving your side. I'm going to stay with you. So while they're in Bethel, um, a, another pro prophecy student comes up to Elisha and says, hey, did you know your beloved teacher is, is leaving today? He's being called up. Elisha says, yes, I know that but please don't talk about it because it grieves me deeply. So Elijah comes back to Elisha and says, Hey, Elisha, you stay here. I'm going to go on to Jericho. You stay here. Same thing. Elisha says, No way, man. I'm going with you. I'm not leaving your side. Again, a student in um, Jericho comes up to him and says, comes up to Elisha and says, Hey, did you know your teacher's leaving today? Same thing. Elisha says, Yes, I know, but don't talk about it. So one more time, Elijah comes to Elisha and says, you stay here. I've got to go on to Jordan. You stay here. Same thing. Elisha says, no way. I'm going with you. So they go to go on to Jordan, Elijah and Elisha have to cross the Jordan River. So Elijah has this cloak, and he takes it off, and he rolls it up, and he hits the waters of the Jordan River with it, and you guessed it. They separated. This side goes this way, this side goes this way, and Elijah and Elisha walk through on dry ground. Well, when they get to the other side, Elijah says to Elisha, Hey, I am I'm leaving you today. I'm being called up. What can I do for you? Elijah, smart man, takes advantage of this, and he says, Well, actually, I would like to have a double portion of your spirit. Elijah says, wow, you really asked a big thing. And he says, you know, it's really not mine to give. It's up to the Lord. But I tell you what, if you see me as I am being called up, then it shall be yours. If not, it won't be. Well, they're walking along to Jordan. And out of nowhere comes this chariot pulled by horses. And they're both on fire. And they come in between Elijah and Elisha and separates them and then Elijah is taken up in a whirlwind now listen in Psalms 104 verse 4 the author of this psalm speaks of God as making the clouds his chariot and riding on the wings of the wind he makes the wind his messengers and flames of fire his servants in our humanity, we can't fully comprehend what took place when that chariot came through out of nowhere and separated the two prophets. We can't imagine it in our um, human minds. But this is what happened. Elisha did keep his eyes on Elijah, and he was not distracted by everything that was taking place around him. He saw Elijah being taken up in the whirlwind, so he did receive the double portion of Elijah's spirit. As Elijah is going up in the whirlwind, his cloak drops to the ground. Elisha picks it up, and he takes it, and he does the same thing with it to the, to the Jordan River, and it separates. So Elijah had, in fact, received the spirit of Elijah. I would like to offer you this to think about today. 
Suppose the flashy, fast-moving horse and chariot and the wind and the fire was simply a distraction. Now, to receive Elijah's portion, Elijah had to see him going up. He had to see Elijah going up in the whirlwind. Elisha kept his eyes on his beloved teacher and not the flaming chariot and the wind. He had to because his inheritance depended upon it. So today, with all the information that we are being bombarded with that's circling on the news media, on social networks, on YouTube, whether it's true <laughs> news or fake news, do not be distracted. Do not be misled. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Your God is in control. Keep your eyes on Jesus, nothing else. Don't look to the right or to the left. Keep your eyes on your Savior. I have something to tell some of you that you may never have heard before. Come close. It's very important. You do not. You do not have to click on and read everything that comes across your newsfeed. I know you think I have lost my mind, that I am crazy, that what I am saying is ludicrous. But listen, I'm not finished. There's this thing. It's called discernment. You should get some. It's free. Just ask for it, and it's very important. Discernment is important to us because Satan sends fiery darts in forms that are often different. He has, he has a wide variety of, of darts. And oftentimes in our frailty, in our humanity, we don't know that these are actually fiery darts. And we don't know that these darts are meant to distract us from our inheritance. Keep your eyes on the prize. The prize is not our comfort in this world, but is the word of God that has been passed down from generation to generation. The prize is our inheritance in Jesus Christ. The prize is the return of our King and our Savior. The prize is the defeat of evil at the hands of God Almighty. Our prize is being in the presence of Jesus Christ for all of eternity. And listen to me. Eternity starts now for the sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. Not when you die. It starts now. You can live now in power and favor. Don't be misled as to what your prize is. And don't be distracted by the information that competes for your time and for the soundness of your mind. This world is temporary, it is dying, it is fleeting, it will not last. Bill Johnson says, True believers are being positioned to display the wonders of Almighty God to the world all around us. The Bible actually calls us a new creation. Many of the prophecies that Jesus has made concerning his church have never been fulfilled. The greater works that are found in John 14, verse 12, are yet to come upon an entire generation. It is important that we say yes to all that has been provided for us through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he continues to say that it is time for the people of God to rise as one and display the power of the glory of God. Do not be distracted by what is taking place around you. No, I am not suggesting that you stick your head in the sand and be ignorant. I am here to encourage you. I am here to remind you yet again that the God you serve is the God that calls all of the shots. It's not our government at any level. It is not our health care system. It is not Bill Gates. It is not Republican or Democrat. It is not China or Russia. It's nobody know how. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Fight for your quiet time with the Lord. Fight for the time that you spend in the word of God. Fight for what you believe in and stand firm on the ground that is rightfully yours. In doing so, your eyes will stay fixed on Jesus. And that is very important because 
Holy, holy, holy is our Lord God Almighty who was, who is today, and who is to come. Your hope is found in nothing less than Jesus Christ. Here's your homework, and I'm going to lose some of you on this one. Here's your homework. Hear me out. I want you to fast, do without, ixnay, no more, none. Fast Facebook, Instagram. Face the new, uh, fast the news. Whatever it takes to separate you from all of the fiery darts that are bombarding us on a daily basis. Turn it off. Open the word. This is where your strength comes from. This is where your power comes from. And this is where the truth comes from. The truth by which you can map out your life. Determine what's important to you and what's not. Turn off the media. Open the Bible. God bless.